<laughs> okay, additions, deletions, reordering. Do we have any? Pamela? No, Madam Mayor. Commissioner? I, I don't wish to pull anything from the consent agenda, but if there was a moment at some point, and you can put it in whatever you like, I would like to comment just a little bit on our advisory board ratification process. Then we would have to pull it. We can't. Can I put in my liaison reports? Is it a reference to the specifics of no, this appointment? No. No. Okay. No, oh, well, then, yeah, you put okay. in your liaison report. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay, then, uh, motion to accept the agenda. Second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right, moving on to presentations. Lake Worth High School, class of 1965, artist Clarence Maisel will present a donated historical artwork to the city. Madam Mayor, for me? Yes. I had the, uh, the honor of um, attending uh, briefly the, the class union held up at the uh, ballroom here a couple weeks ago. Uh, it was a packed house with probably 300 people uh, celebrating their 50th class. Uh, reunion from uh, Lake Worth. There were 60, 63, 64, 5, 6, and 7. So there was a lot of folks there. And the band was uh, pretty impressive. And uh, But the highlight of the evening for me was the opportunity to accept on behalf of the city uh, a wonderful piece of artwork that was done by one of uh, Lake Worth's uh, infamous or famous artists, <laughs> Mr. Clarence Lassell. And uh, it was such a huge piece of artwork, I thought, well, why don't we just have a huge presentation at City Hall? because I couldn't get it into my car, and we were going to have to... <laughs> but I think we're going to go through all that effort, and, and then we, we might have a brief discussion on how we might handle it going forward as far as where it might be, uh, you know, uh, appearing around the city. But if we could... I'd like to introduce Mr. Vassell. There you are. Come on up front. And... Uh, <laughs> you, want, you want to take that microphone for just a second and tell us a little bit about yourself and, and, and the inspiration for this artwork, and then we'll, we'll unveil it if you don't, don't mind. Well, first of all, thank you, you know, for having me here. I want to thank Carol and John Wright for donating uh, this painting. This is a painting that I produced in 1974. Uh, I had a one-man show at the Norton Art Gallery, and this was one of eight large paintings. There were also 50 apples uh, that were in the show, and uh, that was a pivotal time for me, so this was an important painting. Uh, the painting is called H.C. Pence. I don't know if any of you lived here uh, that far back that you remember the Five and Dime store called H.C. Pence. Uh, but uh, it, was, it was the only Five and Dime in Lake Worth. Uh, and I've lived here since 1956. My grandparents came down here in the 30s and in the 40s, and they uh, settled here in the early 50s. Uh, I went to three different elementary schools here in Lake Worth. I went to Highland three different times. I went to South Grade. I was in the very first class at Barton Elementary School. I graduated from Lake Worth High School in 1965. Um, Sheriff uh, Rick Bradshaw was in the class behind me. We wow. played basketball together. <laughs> Just to drop a name. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, this is it's a real honor for me to have this painting here. Um, it's a very nostalgic painting for me because back in uh, the early 50s, uh, Lake Worth was a lot different. Uh, it, was, it was a full-service city. You had just about everything you needed here. We had a central market on Lake Avenue, just a few doors down from H.C. Pence. We had barber shops. We had a pool hall. We had the sports, uh, sports Haven, which was our sporting goods store. We had Herb's Bait and Tackle on Lake Avenue, Leverance Hardware, the M&M Cafeteria. We had a drive-in in the north end of town. Uh, we had a car dealership at the north end of town. We had Andy Andrews, who was mayor here for a while, that um, was on Federal Highway in Lucerne. These meetings used to be down um, on Federal at um, the old, um, I, don't, I don't know what you call the building now, but it's the annex now, I guess. So anyway, there's a lot of history. When I used to go in this five and dime store, I thought I I was you know maybe five six years old the first time I, I went in, and I thought I had this magical power where I could walk into any five and dime and I could walk straight to the toy counter without making any wrong turns. <laughs> and little did I know that most of the toy counters in the five and dimes are right in the middle of the store. So. Uh, I found that out later. But it was a magic place because they had um, fresh roasted nuts. And so there were, there were certain smells. Uh, new chocolate. They had a chocolate counter. 
and just this, it was an old store, so you had wood floors, and it's been converted now. There was a Rexall drug store on the corner, the Blake and uh, Dixie. Uh, so there's been a lot of changes, but uh, I think living here as long as I have, I've seen the diversity you know, come through, and I think it's a much better town now. We have um, we have people from I think it's one of the most diverse cities in the state right now because of our population here. It's such a diverse population. <coughs> I think it's a good thing. Anyway, I'm going. I don't want to take up any more of your time. Do you want me to just? Madam Mayor. Yes. Sure. Can we get a look? <laughs> <laughs> this is really, really, really uncomfortable. Okay. That was with behind the picture. <laughs> so we can see it when it's done its major tour. Mm -hmm. And then everybody that comes in and out of City Hall can, can share in that every single day. That would be wonderful. Commissioner and, McCoy? And I'd just like to reiterate a suggestion I made at one of the previous meetings that um, I think our ballroom as sort of a central focus up at the casino building might be included in part of the rotation or maybe a permanent home. Because it's a big painting, so it needs space to to see it and appreciate it, that's a thought too. Sounds good. Thank you again. What a treasure. Okay. Item 5B, Flag Day Ceremony at Bryan Park by the Lake Worth Scottish Rite. Good evening. My name is Mike Herbert. I'm the General Secretary at the Lake Worth Scottish Rite. At 2000 North D Street. And by the way, I graduated in '66 from Lake Worth. <laughs> <laughs> so we got we got Lake Worth High School well represented tonight. Um, the Lake Worth Scottish Rite has been a citizen of Lake Worth. I don't know whether you all know this or not. For 97 years. Wow. I don't wow. think there's uh, there's but very few um, things in the city of Lake Worth that have been 97 years, but we have. But in 2008, we were given the honor by the city of Lake Worth to do a Flag Day celebration on June 14th. And we want to do that again this year. And I'd like to invite all of the council in. I need your help in getting some word out on how to get the, the members of this city out. Um, we will be there on the 14th, which is a Sunday, at 6.30. It'll go from 6.30 to 7.30. And um, 
we honor the tradition that was set forth by the Congress of the United States of celebrating our flag at 7 o'clock at night. Uh, we do this every year, and as long as I'm around at Lake Worth Scottish Rite, we're going to continue to do it every year, whether it's there or someplace else, but we are going to honor our flag. Um, we were mandated to do that by the Congress, and um, if you're within the side of the flag at 7 o'clock at night, you're asked to stop and do the Pledge of Allegiance, and we're going to be able to let you do that. Um, we do a couple of other things. We have the Cub Scouts there. Um, from time to time, we've done things with the uh, with a historic flag set and and told everybody what each flag meant and how how we got to the flag we have. Um, as a sidelight, if you want to see a piece of history, come to my office at 2000 North D Street, and behind my desk is a flag from 1770. Oh, wow. So it resides here in Lakeport. So once again, I want to thank you for allowing us to do that. The only thing that we ask of the city of Lake Worth is that if you will have power turned on for us, we have our own speaker system. We have everything. We'll take care of it all. We'll get it cleaned up. Come out and join us. Um, we will also be at the evening on the avenue on the 12th passing out a book called Freedom Documents, which we we print and pass out in the state of Florida about 40,000 copies a year. Um, it has all of our major documents in it, so if you want to get one for a kid or a grandchild, child, come there and get it, and we'll be passing out some small things too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to say to the city manager publicly, if you've never been out to the Scottish Rite, you really need to see that facility. And I would just make a suggestion. I know a lot of times we're trying, when we do special workshops and we try to take things out of City Hall on the road, and we've had a number of issues with recording or you know taping, and that's why we do things. What we do, we might want to consider using that building because it has access for a lot of people in that auditorium. You might want to try out, if you'd be willing to let us try out our technology there. Absolutely. Because it's always been an issue when we take that technology on the road. But that sure would be a wonderful place to have those meetings and, and have as many people wow. as we need to have. It's a, a great facility, and I encourage you, if, even if it can't happen for some reason, you get out there and see it anyway. It's a great piece of history. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And, and speaking of Flag Day, I, I had a request from the public. Mike, are we doing anything as far as putting, uh, staff putting up any flags and for Flag Day and right that we can carry over through the 4th of July? Are we doing that this year? It's my understanding. I don't see them up yet, so let me check back with Jacob. That would be wonderful. Thank you. I think that we have 147 flags. Yeah, at least that. Wow. Yeah, we all bought them last week. All the stations and everything. So they should yeah. be going up soon. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Boyd. And I'd just like to thank the Scottish Rights folks because they, for a number of years now, have supported the Gray Mockingbird Community Garden there, mm -hmm. which has become quite a feature, at least in that part of town. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Up next, 5C, an update provided by the Library Board. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. <clears throat> this first slide, and I'm sorry for the presentation. Vicki sent it to me in PDF format instead of PowerPoint. So. <laughs> we'll make do. This is the present state of affairs of our Simpkin Trust Fund. As you can see, <coughs> in fiscal year 0708, there was still 907,000 plus left, and this fiscal year it's down to 186,000 and a half. This is a breakdown. Um, by attendance for last fiscal year in comparison to this fiscal year of sorry, there you go. Make sure it's all there. The last fiscal year, the number of children programs and the number this year that have been reduced due to I'm sure you're aware of some staffing issues in so. and there's a breakdown of the program for September and May. And the last two, the early childhood literacy program and after school programs, the last fiscal year, and then 
this fiscal year, total attendance. As the slide depicts, it's two sessions per week of the Early Childhood Literacy Program. Those are Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m., the average attendance. Let's see if there are 21 students per, per session. These are our museum class hours, the library hours. And these are the programs for adults. You can see it's broken down there. We've got an exciting new do-it-yourself craft program. Um, as you can see, there are some pictures there of some examples of some of the work that's already been done that we're really excited about. And um, Vikian asked me to let you guys know that actually we'll be expanding on, on some of these. I actually also offered Webmark Digital to include photography and videography classes for free if they can incorporate that in the schedule. But we're really excited about some of these new programs for adults try and get more people coming through our doors at the library. We had several Meet Your Author events. As you can see there. <coughs> We're really improving our user experience. As you can see here is just one of the before and after pictures. And I had taken some more, but wasn't aware that it was after the deadline um, to submit any more uh, digital data to PAM, but there's some great changes going on in the library, and it's, it's getting a whole new facelift little by little inside with what we, the little resources we have. For example, on the upstairs, the bookcases used to cover all the windows, and it looked like some spooky kind of attic, and just changing that and exposing our windows, it's, it makes it look like a whole new room up there. Anybody who's been up there and who hasn't seen and we're only halfway through, you'll see the difference when you go up. It really changes the whole, um, we've cleaned up a lot. There's been um, some of the stuff taken off the walls and cluttered. But this blank space you can see in the after picture, up above that bookcase, we will be getting an LED flat panel large screen display up there for a digital display in our library. See, look at the difference. That was before. And look at the difference once the bookcases have been moved and let's in some sunlight. And we're still halfway through and we can use some volunteers and so anybody with some free time and wanting to do like the prayer said, do something and benefit our city can volunteer over at the library board with helping us with these projects. There are, there's a whole new section with new computers there's a section that's being, that has already been cleared out and will be furnished um, for a section where children, so parents can come in with their kids and their kids can play and read and have an area where the parents can supervise them as they're doing their resume or applying for a job. Um, that wasn't there before, as you can see. Pull the slide down, so. That's the new area where the children can play while the adults are in the upper area here on the computers. I'm not going to go on this because this is going to be presented later. I don't know why Vicky included that. Right? I believe Mary's going to present on that song. And I think that's the last one. With that, if you have any questions that are vague, I can answer, but if anything specific, um, Vicki didn't leave me much data before she left on her vacation, so um, I would ask you if there are specific questions, you can email them to her, I'm sure she'll get back with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Amoroso? I just wanted to make a couple comments. Mark, thank you for stepping in and, and taking this on. I want to thank the library board and the friends of the library. But Mike, can we maybe next time try to schedule this when the library is here because I had a few questions, you know, I know um, the mayor was working on some fundraising for the library and I actually spent the day and with some help uh, we put together um, a big pile of grants that would apply to the library and we took them to the library and I would have liked to see updates whether any of those were able to um, she was able to work on. We also have a grant um, that covers a library
librarian that will be ending soon, so we need to maybe talk about that in budget discussions. I would have liked to see um, maybe the librarian had, or the uh, friend of the library or the library board had thoughts and ideas on how to replace that librarian or continue that grant. Um, so maybe moving forward we can get some of those answers, especially if we're going into the budget, we need to make those decisions that are based around the library. Thank you. Andy, I just want to briefly, um, on the fundraising side, um, one of the things I, I started lobbying for with an organization that gave me an award last year for community service, which is the Palm Beach County Curry Festival, and I gave them the idea of possibly doing it this year in our Bryant Park, and I know they've met with some of our event people already, and what they do at this event, um, they have food vendors and whatnot, and then at whatever's collected, they donate 50% to a nonprofit, and I asked them, would they do that this year for the library? And we're in, uh, they've agreed to do that, so it's just a matter of continuing. I believe it's in October when, when they have this festival every year. Yeah, the I, Palm I Beach County too, Party. So you I met with Doyle like and to okay, see, Derek. You know, if uh, the librarians work. I'm always trying my best to help our library. It needs all the help it can get. Great, thank you. Okay. Thank you guys. All right. Um, moving on next, five D. Vice Mayor Scott Maxwell to announce recipients of the 2015 Resident Education to Action Program, the REAP Grants. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, you know, as we all know, that you know, our city is faced with a lot of challenges, large and small, and, and uh, many of these challenges uh, often are met, if you will, uh, by the good work and, and efforts of our neighborhood associations. And we are very blessed here in Lake Worth to have neighborhood associations that essentially cover every square foot of our city from north to south, east to west which I think is um, quite remarkable because I don't think there's anybody else in Palm Beach County that can, can brag in, in such, a, such a way. But over the, over the years, our neighborhood associations become more organized and more sophisticated and have been participating in this resident to uh, education action program, which by the way, I believe I participated in the first one back in the day, uh, 2001 or whatever, but they weren't giving any money away back then. So my timing was way, way off. But uh, the times have changed, that, that program has changed and um, and we were, the City of Lake Worth and the neighborhood associations were, were really fortunate. They worked very, very hard and they put in, uh, they, they logged about 7,500 uh, volunteer hours towards uh, receiving these grants that I'm about to announce here. Uh, the county gave out a total of 25 grants uh, for this round of uh, REAP awards and, and the City of Lake Worth knocked out 11 of the 25. Wow. So that's pretty yeah. impressive. $38,500, which is, is, you know, not, that's not chump change, that's for sure. So um, what I'd like to do is a couple of things. First, I want to announce uh, the names of the different organizations and neighborhoods and what they received. And I'd also would like to invite Mary Lindsay to come up and speak a little bit about her participation in this, because she has been, in my mind, a driving force in getting these grants, getting everybody motivated and, and signed up and kind of mentoring them, if you will, through the grant process. She's been a real guiding light, uh, been a real help for us, and she's been a very big help, but from what I understand, at the county level, too. So they're very, very high on Mary Lindsay and very appreciative of her efforts. So without further ado, let me read off um, in alphabetical order the, uh, the grant awards, um, and they are as follows. Bryant Park Neighborhood Association, $1,002. That's going to be uh, to help them with the crime watch program. Lake Worth College Park Neighborhood Association, $5,000. Wow. And that money is going to be used primarily for the, the little free libraries uh, that we'll hear a little bit about in uh, just a few minutes. Cottages of Lake Worth, $5,000. Dr. Hendricks and his group have done a real fine job of really going out and mapping, if you will, uh, our cottages and really promoting uh, the benefits of, of, of redoing and, and uh, maintaining these really nice cottages we have all over town. Downtown Jewel Neighborhood Association, $1,400. They're also going to be participating in some crime wash programs with some signs and whatnot. Lake Worth Visitor Center, $2,000. Yeah, they're going to be getting some display racks and information boards and, and things like that to help with their efforts to um, help our visitors when they come through town. NAPC Neighborhood Association President's Council, $5,000. They too will be um, working with the free library uh, program. And um, 
there's no different John Foss, or else you're going to have a big party. No, that's not true. <laughs> John, I'm just kidding. Parent Cove Neighborhood Association, $2,000. for their 501c3 tax exempt status. So that's that's pretty cool. Pineapple Beach Neighborhood Association, 5,000 big ones. Ooh, wow. clean, don't litter. So they're going to get some trash cans and um, yeah, ho have, hopefully have their uh, logo painted on some of those trash cans around their neighborhood. So that's a pretty neat initiative. Royal Ponciana Neighborhood Association, $1,500. Be dabbling in the, in the crime watch business a little bit and uh, getting some signs put up around throughout their neighborhood. South Palm Park Association, $3,200. Right. This is a, kind of a new, a, a neat initiative. They're going to be focusing on um, new homeowner welcome kits oh, and literature good. for the city of Lake Worth, which I think is pretty nice. So thank you so much for South Palm for doing that. Um, it looks like there's another one. For South Palm. I don't know how you got the double dip here, but you got another $2,200. Um, this is also to help you with your crime watch program with the signage and whatnot. So, congratulations. <laughs> and last but not least, and this is what Mark was speaking to a little bit ago the Friends of the Library, $5,000. So, wow. the citywide net network of take a book, leave a book. So, um, so congratulations to all 11 organizations. You did a really great job. Uh, it was a little bit uncomfortable for me because, as I said, I got to participate in the ceremony. And originally, I thought I was going to be, for some reason, I got the idea that I was going to be the only elected official. But there were three or four elected officials. And as they were reading out the names, it became more and more uncomfortable for me because the guys next to me were nudging me like, hey, guys, you're going to leave some for us. <laughs> so, uh, so Lake Worth really, really uh, put on a hell of a show, and, and I personally am very proud, and I'm sure everybody else is very proud of the effort and, and the results that you got this year from your um, your grant process. So Mary, if you want to come up wherever you are, if you're here, and tell us a little bit more, and then I'd like to have, if you all brought your little checks, if you all want to come up for a photo op, that might be a, a really cool thing too. So Mary, take it away. I'm, I'm happy and, and I'm proud to speak to this, but only with the permission of the other re uh, participants, because I'm no grand poobah in this thing. This was a collective effort, like every successful neighborhood effort is, came through partnership and collaboration, and we all worked together to make this happen. Um, thank you very much, Scotty. Your, your numbers are dead on accurate. Out of the $82,000 uh, pool of grant money that was available, Lake Worth neighborhoods came home with 45% of it, and that was for money available throughout the county. So great job, everybody. Because we now have five new neighborhoods that will be part of the Crime Watch, I thought that just to push it a little bit, I've got some make call y'all cards to pass around, as well as these great brochures from PBSO talking about the Neighborhood Watch. So if you get those started that way, that, that'll get everybody 